disastrous race cars. Um, it's been a hell of a day already. I hooked up the truck and I went over to my buddy's house to pick up his trailer so I can tow the race car to the tuner so hopefully he can figure out uh, the crank and cam issue. I get to my buddy's house and I realize the truck has a nail in the tire. Off to Costco to get the tire fixed because the tires are from there and they do it for free. So that was a one hour wait. And then get to my buddy's house and we hook up the trailer and he's like, oh yeah, I forgot last time I used the trailer. I broke the, uh, the hook that you mount the ratchet to. So I was like, all right, well, let me go to my house. And we picked up the welder and a bunch of other tools. Go back to his house and we weld up the trailer. That was supposed to only take like 40 minutes, but it ended up taking like two hours. And uh, now I'm on my way to pick up the, tow, uh, the race car and hopefully drop it off at uh, UMS Tuning. That's my tuner. And hopefully he can figure out what the issue is. Uh, unfortunately, all I was able to get today was a car dolly and not an actual trailer. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of sketched out about towing the car with a, with a dolly, but the shop is only like a mile and a half away from where the cars are right now. So, and it's all, you know, um, surface streets. So I'm going to tow the car like 35 miles an hour, uh, nice and slow. I'm not going to disconnect the drive shaft or anything, which is what you're supposed to do when you tow a rear wheel drive car with the front wheels lifted up off the ground. I could put the car on the dolly backwards and have the front wheels on the ground, but uh, if the steering wheel lock breaks, the car's going sideways while I'm going straight, disaster can happen. So I don't think I'll burn up any of the gears or the fluids in the trans with the diff while I'm towing it. Just like I said, I'm only going on a mile and a half, so nice and easy is going to be the name of the game today. Hopefully I can show you guys some cool videos, uh, I'm sorry, some cool cars and stuff at the shop. Last time I was there they had like a 2,000 horsepower twin turbo vet uh, in addition to all sorts of other cool cars. So let's see what they got there. Well there she is all loaded up. Boy I don't like this setup at all. Especially because I just gouged the shit out of my intercooler. Hopefully it didn't break the core. I don't think it did. But that nail right there coming up totally just gashed it. I don't think it broke the core. I guess we'll find out. But that sucks. Hopefully, this mile and a half to two mile tow is gonna be safe. I'm sketched out about this. So the other day I made a video about what keeps you guys motivated about work on working on projects when nothing goes right. Case in point, check out this trailer that we fixed today. Uh, apparently, there was more wrong with it than what we even bothered to fix today. Uh, let me show you what we fixed first. We welded these uh, D-rings on here so we could, you know, strap it down. But check out the platform it's sitting on. You see this gap? It shouldn't be there. Look at the other side. No gap there. Big ass, like, three inch gap there. So when I move the whole thing, just the car rocks back and forth as that thing, uh, as that metal plate flexes. So. This morning was a big old waste of time. I got a tow truck on the way. The whole idea was to save me the money. Now it's gonna cost me like 85 bucks to get this thing towed fucking two miles down the street. <sighs> Welcome to Race Car and Chill. This is working on cars with Stan. Literally every fucking time something goes wrong. I have the worst luck. It's so hard not to beat yourself up over shit like this, man. I think I'm just gonna sell all my cars and, and just drive a Prius and never be a car guy again. It only takes so much of this shit, man. Here's the dyno where all the magic happens. Race cars on race cars on race cars. Here's here's gutted race car. Took the shell or took the cage out and everything. Just took a couple more hundred pounds. Subarus, Dodsons, all sorts of stuff. Here's the bottom of that. 1200 or 2000 horsepower bet I was telling you guys about. Got a couple Supras here. MK3. Looks like a 7M. Check out this 2J though. This thing makes about 1200 to the wheels. Non VBTI. 
going there, man. Five <laughs> bucks going. for that. F five bucks? You got I'll give you ten. It's probably not worth much more anyway, right? Here's the backside of this beautiful Supra. And there's my piece of junk. That is UMS. Good luck. Fingers crossed. But man, fuck that car so much. I hate it. That Supra though, that thing is goals. I was just talking to the owner, his name is Dragon. Uh, he has owned that thing for 10 years, said he's like modified it since day one. Um, yeah, he's maxing out Tony's dyno uh, in fifth gear at like like 1200 he says it'll make more than that but the dyno doesn't read more than that it's a dyna pack so uh, yeah it's a six speed too so he's got a whole nother gear um but yeah so i didn't i wasn't really able to film too much inside the shop they have a lot going on and i hate being that guy i'm not even supposed to be back there where the cars are but tony's kind of uh i don't he's like a, a friend it's not just like a business type of relationship so he lets me go back there um, but like most people aren't allowed to and I hate to be the person walking around there with a camera and stuff so um, yeah hopefully you know one day I'll get to like sit down and like do a legit interview and we can go through some cars he's done uh, his own race car is amazing he, he does time attack kind of uh, racing in an Evo and um, I showed you guys he's totally gutted the whole car he cut the cage out uh, they're gonna the cars been painted like seven or eight times over the years so they're gonna sand that all back down and start fresh they're gonna start fresh but uh the cool thing that that car is he's got the whole passenger and the seat and the steering column and the pedals everything has moved back like 13 inches to have more of the weight in the middle of the car and uh that's the kind of stuff he does tony's a perfectionist he's really good at what he does uh i'm very confident uh giving him my car i just wish i, I hate to be that guy you know like he hooked me up on a tune did it for a uh, you know he did it as a friend and the car never really ran right after that and it turns out he was kind of he kind of got screwed over to be truthful and I've given him more cash than he's asked for just because I feel bad and I know what his time is worth because you saw the kinds of cars he builds so my car's not really like at that caliber so yeah I, I feel bad giving the car to him but even he, he's literally like the best in the area so if he can't figure it out I'm literally just gutting that car and starting fresh. Uh, whether it's building on my own harness or getting a junkyard harness and, and tapping into it. I just hope to hell that he can get that car running because if he can't, I don't think anybody else can. That's gonna be it for this video. That's how my day went. I've been having really bad luck. I hope to God Tony has better luck than I have, uh, especially working on that car. And if you guys like what you guys see, please, 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 that means the world to me if you subscribe down to this channel. And um, once that car is running, we're going to be doing some awesome videos. And the channel is definitely going to change a little bit. Uh, the content is going to be changing. It's going to be a little bit more uh, theatrical, less vlog type of stuff. We'll still be doing vlogs and DIYs, but I kind of want to get into like making movies, like good quality productions, interviewing people, asking them about their cars, and kind of just sharing why car guys are car guys, what makes guys so passionate about their vehicles, why we do what we do, because we all know car guys, we're not normal people. With that being said, till next time guys.